good afternoon students now paper number 9 rrb scale 1 mains paper number 9 now in this question numbers 1 to 5 these five questions are based on syllogisms isn't it now question number 1 all hats are coats all these hats are what coats all hats are coats no coat is a shoe no coat is a shoe means no intersection between coat and shoe isn't it next one all shoes are sandals all these shoes are what all shoes are sandals now this is the basic diagram hence with the help of this basic diagram first one is in possible conclusions first let us finalize the definite conclusions then only let's come back to possible conclusions and the second one some sandals at least some is nothing but some only some sandals are shoes now all shoes are sandal means some sandals are shoes is always true first second conclusion definitely true then coming to the first one some hats are sandals some hats are sandals is it possible some hats are sandals is a possibility tell me whether some hats are sandals is a possible or not now which two should not be intersected here now this coat and the shoe should not be intersected but whereas tell me whether i can draw my sandal like this or not isn't it now this negative statement is in between coat and shoe but whereas it is not with the sandal whether it is possible or not hence it is possible to prove this one and some hats or sandals is a possibility hence both the conclusions follow hence it is given with choice both conclusions choice to question number 2 it is question number 1 it is choice to then coming to question number 2 now for the first one and the second one the statement is one and the same isn't it as the statement is one and the same now let us work out question number 2 in this now some hats are shoes some hats are shoes is false isn't it because hat is here and shoe is here some hats are shoes is false next one no hat is a shoe no hat is a shoe is definitely true as of now now it is a negative conclusion as it is a negative conclusion which is followed from the basic diagram now we should draw an alternate diagram to make this one false at least once then how can you make this one false by proving some hats or shoes now tell me whether i can draw my shoe like this if you draw shoe like this then only no hat is a shoe will be false but whereas we cannot draw like this why because if you draw shoe shoe like this no coat is a shoe the statement will be invalid as the statement is invalid alternate diagram cannot be drawn and this conclusion will be true forever then what is your answer here only two follows isn't it now if you observe here no hat is a shoe and some hats are shoes these two are what complementary pairs isn't it as there are complementary pairs are we getting this one either or are we getting either or in this one no why because alternate diagram itself is not proven and say there are is not at all possible hence what is your answer only two follows then choice five hence having complementary pairs within the conclusions does not ensure you either or in all the cases you will get either or only when alternate diagram is proven then question number 3 now in this question number 3 some seconds or minutes some of the seconds or minutes can be written like this seconds and minutes some seconds or minutes all minutes are hours all these minutes are what all minutes are hours and some hours are days some of the hours are days and first one all seconds or days is a possibility first one is a possibility second one all minutes are days all minutes are days there is no intersection between minute and day isn't it and the second conclusion does not follow then coming to the first one all seconds or days is a possibility as all the statements are affirmative we can draw as a single diagram second equals to minute equals to hour equals to day now in this diagram this is the universal diagram for an affirmative statements and now in this diagram what happens here all seconds or days is it possible or not definitely true and so what is your answer here only conclusion one follows and it is given in choice one question number 3 choice one then fourth one now question number 4 all transports are goods all these transport are what all transport are goods and some goods or services some goods or services 
all services are reverse all these services are what reverse again all the statements are affirmative as the statements are affirmative negative conclusion cannot be drawn isn't it but as the first one is what no good is a reward no good is a reward is false because these are goods and these are rewards that is false second one, all services are transports all services are transport that is again false because only some of the services are transport is true but as all services are transport is false and so neither one not two it is given in choice five question number four choice five then coming to the fifth one and again the fifth one is also based on the same statements then question number five conclusions some transports are rewards some transports are rewards is false then then what is the next one here no transport is a reward no transport is a reward is true now in this one the second conclusion which is true is a negative conclusion to make this one false now we should prove some transport or rewards tell me whether i can extend my reward like this or not isn't it alternate diagram proven alternate diagram proven previous conclusion will be false after making the previous conclusion false then check out the affirmative conclusion which was false earlier in the basic diagram has become true or not now in the first conclusion is an affirmative conclusion which was which was false in the basic diagram now some transport or reverse has become true now isn't it hence now it has become true when the second conclusion followed first one has become false when the second has become false first has become true hence what is your answer here either one or two hence it is given in choice five now here we are having complementary pairs here we got either or why we got either or here because alternate diagram is proven but where is in question number earlier we had discussed about question number question number one question number two now in this question number two what happens here complementary pairs are there but whereas we are not getting either or in that case why alternate diagram is not proven clear now and this is about question number five choice five either one or two then sixth one now in question number six what is the statement here a recent survey suggested that a recent survey suggested that recent survey underline this word recent survey suggested that the standards of standards of what higher education institutions in country a now here he is talking about higher education institutes in country a as compared to international benchmarks are very very low isn't it when compared with the international benchmarks then the standards in this country a the two higher education institutes is very very low then in fact country a does not have a single education institution in the top 200 universities in the world now in this one there is we could not find out any institute in this top 200 universities in the world from this country as a result now clearly specified as a result students in country a prefer going abroad for a higher education thus leading to brain drain in the country now sir as the educational institutes are not proper in this one are not maintaining that standards hence the students are from this country a are preferring to go abroad in to do their higher studies isn't it then what is the problem here which are the following statements represent an appropriate course of action now the question is about courses of action course of action means now a problem will be given in the statement identify the problem correctly then try to solve the given problem with the given choices now what is the problem here the problem is with higher education institutions in this country are not maintaining high standards isn't it that means the quality of the education in country a in a higher education institutions is not up to the mark isn't it now by implementing some course of action what should happen here finally the quality of education in this country a should go up then first one the government should encourage international companies to set up shop in country a here is talking about what international companies rather than the statement is regarding higher education but is here is talking about companies and nowhere related to this and again in order to lure good students with better job opportunities in the first one is talking about job opportunities but whereas in the statement is talking about educational qualification isn't it standards in education hence first one is nowhere nearer to this one 
then coming to the second one what about the second here the government should improve the quality of teachers by providing the quality of teachers by providing better quality training here is talking about what quality of teachers but here in the statement the problem is with what the problem is with standards of higher education isn't it hence quality of training facilities to all teachers across the country to all the teachers he is talking about all the teachers but where the statement is regarding higher education but not all the teachers and the second one is also does not find the course of action next one third one the government should start new institutes which would provide a higher education comparable with the international standards s yes. by implementing this one the problem can be solved to some extent isn't it that means the government should start new institutes which would provide higher education because the problem is with the higher education the standards of higher education is low when compared with the when compared with the worldwide then if the government has do this one the standards of higher education in this country will also goes up the problem can be solved or not as three can be your answer then coming to the fourth one the government should examine the international models of education and should modify the quality of education according to the match in the international standards then the government should now in the fourth one is talking about what the government should examine the international models of education and is and should modify the quality of education according to match in the international standards now in choice for is talking about what is talking about the entire education system in this country but whereas the statement is regarding higher education and so what is your answer here choice 3 is the answer because in choice 3 he is straight away wanting towards higher education institutes and to be developed by this government itself by implementing this one whether the problem of brain drain can be solved or not hence what is your answer choice 3 is the answer hence question number 6 it is choice 3 then seventh one how many meaningful english words can be formed can be found with these four letters a e n r yes tell me what are the words that can be formed n e a r near and what is other e a r n earn hence there are two words that can be formed with the help of these four letters two words that is choice three question number seven two words near and earn are the two words that can be formed choice three then question number eight procures p r o c u r e s how many such pairs of letters are there in the word each of which has as many letters then start counting from p q r s t u v w any letter matching here no and starting with r s t and u now share between r and u how many letters are there in this word two letters in the alphabetical order also will have only two letters s and t and r and u forms a pair r s t u v w x o p q r isn't it o p q r now tell me between o and r there are two letters in this word alphabetical order also will have only two letters p q and r next one c d e f g u v w x r s t and so on hence from left hand side to right hand side how many you can able to find out two again in the reverse order as well in the reverse order if you start with s t u v w x y z any letter matching here no then starting with e f g h i j k no letter is matching r s t u v w no letter is matching u v w x y c d e f o p q hence how many pairs will be there you will have only two such pairs left hand side to right hand side we have only two pairs question number 8 the ninth one now j and k are married j and k are married with each other isn't it now j and k are married j and k are married now the genders of these persons were not known as of now k is the mother of s as k is the mother of s and this j is the father of s isn't it k is the mother of s p is the only sibling of s p is the only sibling as only sibling s and p are siblings to each other p is the only sibling k is the mother of s p is the father of v now this p is the father of whom p is the father of v and z is the son in law of j as z is the son in law of j 
Now J's daughter's husband is J. How many children this J is having? Only two children, S and P. Out of which this J cannot be married to P. Why? Because P is a male and J is again a male. Hence this J cannot be married with P. And this J must be married to whom? J must be married to S. Isn't it? Hence J and S are married. And this J is? J is what? J is son-in-law. A J is son-in-law. And this S is a female. S is the daughter of J and K. And Q is the mother of V. As Q is the mother of V, now P is a male and P is the father and Q is the mother of V. And this is how we can able to represent the given information in the form of a family tree. Then question number 9. How is Z related to S? Now Z is the husband of S. Husband that is given choice 5. Ninth one. Then question number 10. How is J related to Q? How is J related to Q? Q's husband is P, husband's father. Spouse's father, spouse's father, father-in-law. And it is given in choice 4. Choice 4, father-in-law. Then question number 11. Now question number 11, it is again based on critical reasoning. Now the statement made by this one. Use pesticide X for your crops. It is made of what? It is made of oh, natural ingredients only. It is made up of only natural ingredients and does not contain any chemical con It does not contain any chemical condition, any chemical contents. It is made up of with only natural ingredients. Hence, it is thus, thus, thus means hence, therefore, therefore it is not harmful to the soil. And this is what the statement made by this person. Why it is not harmful to the soil? Finally, this person has come to a conclusion. What is the conclusion this person has made? It is not harmful to the, so harmful to the soil. Why it is not harmful to the soil? Before coming to that conclusion, what was there in this person's mind? That is nothing but the assumption, isn't it? Now the question is about what? The question is about the assumption. What is the assumption of this person before making this final statement that this is not harmful to the soil? Soil kitty personally the harmful under the honor. In the Kunda then what a man kunar Japandi? Assumption and what a man's law no desum. What a man kuni statement Japan. Why it is not harmful to the soil? Because it is made up of it is made up of only natural ingredients. And as there were no chemical components including in this one, involved in this one, hence it is not harmful. Hence what is the assumption of this one? The assumption of this person is no natural ingredient can be harmful to the soil. Isn't it? Now he has come to a conclusion. What is the conclusion he has made? It is not harmful. Why it is not harmful? Because it is made up of natural in ingredients. As it is natural ingredients were there, hence it is not harmful. Clear now? Then what is your answer? Only two is the answer. Now here, here he is not talking anything regarding whether a pesticide can be natural or not, isn't it? A pesticide can be natural or not, no information is given. And whether a pesticide is beneficial to the soil or also it is not clearly specified. Then coming to the third one, no chemical can ever be beneficial, isn't it? Is he talking anything regarding this one? Here he is talking about the harmful effects of this one and he is not talking regarding the benefits of this. And fourth one. Crops cannot be grown without pesticides. That's also not clearly given. Most of the pesticides in the, available, in the market available, in the market contain chemical ingredients. Now here his assumption regarding the other, other pesticides is not clearly given in the statement. He's talking about only pesticide X and his assumption regarding the other pesticides is not given. And so what is your answer? Only two is the answer. Done with this 11th one. Then question number 12 onwards. Now in this 12, how is I related to K? It is based on data sufficiency. How is I related to K? Now in order to identify how this I related to K, now let us check out the statements, are which statement is required or sufficient. J is the brother of I. J is the brother of I can be written like this. J and I are siblings to each other. S is the mother of J. S is the mother of J and S is married to M. 
as s is married to m s is the mother of j and m is the father of j and k is the brother of m k is the brother of m and k has only one niece and only one nephew k has one niece and one nephew only one niece and one nephew no no this one k has only one niece k is the brother of m as this k is the brother of m how many siblings this k is having that is not clearly given isn't it but there is one thing which is clearly given is that what is information given here k has only one niece and only one nephew if this i is a male then this k will have two nephews isn't it but where this i is this k is having only one nephew and one niece which implies that there is one j is the nephew and i is the niece then how is this i related to k i is the niece of k are you getting the answer or not one alone is sufficient then as one alone is sufficient now we should check out two alone is sufficient or not then b has only two children m and k now this b has two children m and k b has two children m and k m is married to s m is married to s i is the granddaughter of b as i is the granddaughter of b this i can be the daughter of m or can be the daughter of k as of now it is not clearly given whether k is married or not now in the second statement k is not married as k is not married this i cannot be the daughter of i cannot be the daughter of k hence this i is what i is the daughter of whom s and m as i is the daughter of s and m then how is i related to k k's siblings daughter siblings daughter is niece hence two alone is sufficient one alone is sufficient two alone is sufficient which implies that each statement alone is sufficient either one or two either in statement one alone sufficient and two alone is are also sufficient either one or two it is given in choice three then question number 13 now in this question number 13 what is information given here 13th one now 13 among friends how many friends are there six friends who is the shortest now the question is about among the six friends i j k l m n who is the shortest that's what the information about isn't it then only three people are shorter than l as only three people are shorter than l then what should be the position of l l must be the at the third place four five and six only three persons are shorter than this l only three persons are shorter than l i is taller than k but shorter than j i whatever this i taller than k but shorter than j j i k i is taller than k but shorter than j j is not the tallest as j is not the tallest isn't it j is not the tall j cannot be at this place then tell me how many persons are there one to five six persons among these six persons i j k l m and n then who is the shortest here can i be the shortest tell me no because i is taller than k i cannot be the shortest and j cannot be the shortest because j is taller than at least two people i and k and then k can be the shortest l whatever this l l cannot be the shortest because l is the third tallest m any information regarding this m no information is given regarding this m isn't it as no information is regarding this m hence what is the answer here as what is the answer who can be the shortest either k can be the shortest or m can be the shortest or n can be the shortest isn't it here in the first one is talking about only three persons j i and l i can able to determine the remaining three persons can be the shortest or cannot be the shortest hence among these three any person can be the shortest hence one alone is not sufficient to determine the answer then coming to the second condition one two three four five and six now among the six persons only two people are taller than l as only two people are taller than l l must be at the third place because there are only two persons before this l m is shorter than both k and i m is shorter than whom both k and i n is the tallest now n is the tallest clearly given as n is the tallest and whatever this m now again if you check out here i j k l m n among these six who is the, who can be the shortest n i i cannot be the shortest because i is taller than m and j no information given about j as of now 
and k, k cannot be the shortest because k is taller than m and l cannot be the shortest because l is at the third place and m can be the shortest and n cannot be the shortest because n is the tallest. Hence, with the help of condition number 2, either j or m can be the shortest, isn't it? We are getting two different answers. Hence, so 1 alone is not sufficient, 2 alone is not sufficient. Then by combining these two, if you combine these two, what is there in the first one? j cannot be the shortest, that is what we have in the first one. As j cannot be the shortest, we have ruled out with j. Then who is the person left over? m is the person left over. Are we getting a unique answer or not? Who is the shortest here? m is the shortest. How are you getting this answer? Only by combining these two statements we got the answer and statements in both are required and the data in both the statements are required that is given in choice 3. Clear now? 13th one it is choice 3. With the help of 1 alone we are getting 3 different answers either K, M or N. With the help of 2 alone I am getting 2 different answers J or M. By combining these 2 in the condition number 1 J is not the shortest. Hence, J cannot be the shortest, the only person which is left, who is left over is M. Hence, M is the shortest. And third in one. Then question number 14. Now, in this question number 14, what is given in this one, 14 one? 14 coding and decoding. How is train coded in the given code language? In the code language, no train to catch and train halt by now. Now, if you compare these two, what is the word which is common here? Train is the only word which is common between these two statements. No train to catch and train halt by now. As train is the only word which is common, only one code will be common. Hence, one alone is sufficient to determine the answer. Isn't it? Then coming to the second one, catch the train now and now the station comes. As what are the elements which are common here? Now the, now the. As two words are common, two codes will be common. And the remaining two words are left in this one, catch or train. And the, co and the code for this train could be around two codes will be there, isn't it? And so what is your answer here? Neither only one alone is sufficient, two alone is not sufficient. Choice two. One alone sufficient, well data in two alone is not sufficient. Then 15th one. Now question number 15, six people are seated around a circular table facing the center. Six persons facing around a center. Then, what is the position of D with respect to A? Now, the question is about what? The position of D with respect to A. B stands second to the right of A. If you play, take A at this place, B will be here. B stands second to the right of A, only one person between E and A. As only one person between E and A, E must be at this place. C is an immediate neighbor of both A and E. As C is an immediate neighbor of both A and E, C must be in between A and E and E stands second to the right of B. E is, C is an immediate neighbor of both A and E. Then what is the question here? What is the position of D with respect to A? D can be either here or D can be here. If D is here, immediate right or if D is here, opposite. Hence we are having two different answers because D or F can be any one of these two places. Hence one alone is not sufficient. As one alone is not sufficient, then condition number 2. Now in condition number 2 only one person between A and B. Only one person between A and B, six persons are there. As only one person between A and B, if A is here, B can be here, that is the first possibility. And in the second possibility only one person between A and B. Now if A is here, B can be here. B can be either to the left hand side of A or to the right hand side. Only one person stands between A and B. E stands second to the right of B. As E is seated second to the right of B in this case, now in this case E stands second to the right of B is invalid, it is not possible. Both D and F are the immediate neighbors of B. As D and F are the immediate neighbors of B, if D is here, F will be here, or if D is here, F will be here. Then who is the person left over? C is the person left over. Hence, with the help of condition number 2. Then what is the position of D with respect to A? D can be either to the immediate right or opposite, isn't it? One alone is not sufficient, two alone is not sufficient. Then by combining this. If you combine these two A, C, E, here also A, C, E, D, R, F, D, R, F, B and B, here also D, R, F. That means by the help of statement 1, we are getting the same diagram as that of statement 2. By combining this one also, we cannot able to determine the position of D. Hence, both the statements are also not sufficient to determine the answer. Then what is the answer here? 
even in both the statements together is not sufficient choice two. Fifteenth one choice two. Then question number sixteen. Now in the sixteen. Among 13 people standing in a straight line, what is the position of B? Now, the question is about the position of B. A stands at the extreme right end of the line. A is at the 13th position, extreme right end of the line. Only two persons between A and S, two persons between A and S, isn't it? Then, S must be 10th position from the left hand side. Only three people between J and S, three people between J and S, and so J must be the sixth from the left only one person between B and J. As one person between B and J, B can be either here or B can be here. And so many possibilities are there to this B. B can be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And three more persons were there before this person. Hence, B can be the fourth position or eighth position. And so what is the position of this B? Either 4 or 8. Are you getting two different answers or not? As you are getting two different answers, one alone is not sufficient. Then coming to the second one. Now coming to the second. Is the first one clear? A stands at the extreme right end. Only two people between A and S. Three people between J and S. And only one person between B and J. One person between B and J. Then only one person between B and J. Next, N stands. Oh, some more information is there. N stands second from the left hand of the line. O stands second to the right of N. Now, sir, O stands second to the right of N. Whatever this position of N, N must be at this place. And O stands second to the right of N, O will be at this place. Then O must be fourth from the first. As O is fourth from the first, B cannot be here, O will be here. If O is here, then B will be here. Then what is the only possibility for this B? Eighth position. Are you getting the answer or not? Only one alone is sufficient because the position of B is 8th from the left end. Then one alone is sufficient. Then coming to the second one, K stands third from the left end of the line. As K stands third from the left end of the line, only one person between K and Z. As only one person between K and Z, how many possibilities do we have? Z can be at the left extreme or Z can be either here. There are two possibilities and only one person between K and Z, only two people between Z and B, only two people between Z and B, one, two, isn't it? Only two people between Z and B, B will be here. And in this case, only two persons between Z and B, B can be either here or B can be here. Only two persons between Z and B, isn't it? Only two persons between Z and B, R stands to the immediate left of B. R is to the immediate left of B, R can be either here or R can be. In this case, it is not possible because K is to the immediate left of B. R is to the immediate left of B. R does not stand at even or the extreme ends of the line. As R is not at the extreme end of the line, R cannot be here, then R must be here. If R is here, R is to the immediate left of B, then B must be here. Then what is the position of B? 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Again, are we getting the answer or not? B is 8th position from the left. 1 alone is sufficient, 2 alone is also sufficient. Each statement alone is sufficient and it is given in choice 1. And this is about question number 16, choice 1, either statement 1 alone or 2 alone is sufficient. And this is about data sufficiency, then 17 to 21. Now in this question number 17 to 21, it is based on what? It is based on circular arrangement, 9 friends L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, N, T odd number of persons were given. As odd number of persons were given, you cannot have opposite in this one, isn't it? Next one. Nine friends are seated around a circular table with equal distance. Nine persons are there. Now, let us fix this nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and we can fix ninth person at any one of these places. Done? Nine persons. Nine friends are seated around a circular table. L sits thought to the right of S. As S is here, L is seated third to the right of S. One, two, three. L must be here. L sits third to the left. L sits third to the left of S. As L is seated third to the left of S, then, then what should be the position of L? L must be at this place, left hand side. As all these persons are facing towards the center, left is clockwise. L sits third to the left of S. 
only two people between S and P. As only two people between S and P, P can be either to the left hand side of S or to the right hand side. Left hand side is not possible because L is already there. Hence, right hand side P must be here. Only two people sit between S and P. L sits exactly between Q and R. L is exactly between whom? Q and R. As L is between Q and R, Q or R can be in these two places. How many possibilities do we have? We have some two possibilities. And L sits between Q and R. Q sits thought to the right of M. Uh, whatever this Q, Q is seated thought to the right of M. Only two people between M and O. N sits second to the right of L. N sits second to the right of L. N will be here. And only two people between M and O. <coughs> L sits exactly between Q and R. Q sits thought to the right of M. As Q sits thought to the right of M, now sir, Q sits thought to, if Q, if you take Q at this place, isn't it? There are two possibilities. If you take Q at this place, and Q sits thought to the right of M, M must be at this place. Are you following or not? There are two possibilities for this Q. What about those two possibilities? Either at this place or at this place. In between L and N, or to the left hand side of L. If you take Q at this place, that is to the immediate left of L, then M will be at this place to the immediate left of P, isn't it? Then if M is at this place, then only two people sit between M and O, then O must be in the place of Q or S. Is it possible? Not possible. Not possible implies that M cannot be at this place. As M cannot be here, Q cannot be here. As Q cannot be here, hence where should this Q? Q must be in between L and N only. Are you following or not? Q must be in between where? Q must be in between L and N. As Q is in between L and N, now this Q is seated thought to the right of M, hence M must be here. Isn't it? Q is thought to the right of M. Then whatever this O, only two people between M and O. As only two people between M and O, O must be to the immediate right of S. And what else information is left over here? And Q sits thought to the right of M. If Q is here, N, L sits between Q and R. As Q is here, R will be here. Then who is the person left over? As tell me who is the person left over. L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, and T is the person left over. Hence, where should this T? T must be in between O and P. Done with this? Then question number 17. If P and Q interchange their places, P and Q interchange their places and so do R and S. P and Q are interchanging. Q is coming to this place and P is going to this place. R and S means S is, R is coming to this place and S is going to this place. Then, who will be exactly between P and S? Now, P and S, who is that person here? M is the person. That is choice one. 17 choice one. Isn't it? Now, these two persons. Then, who will be exactly between P and S? <coughs> who will be exactly in between P and S? S, who is the person between P and S? Tell me. Now the person between P and S, P and S, question number 17. S, question number 17. Now once again, P and Q interchange their places. Now P is coming to this place. Sorry. P and Q interchange their place means P is coming to this place and Q is going to this place. Isn't it? As P and Q. Hence, who is between P and S? L is the person between P and S. L that is given in choice for. Then question number 18. Which of the following will come in place of the question mark? M, L, N, O, P. M and L, how many places to the right hand side? Two places. M and L. L and N, one, two, two places. N and O, one, two, two places. O and P, again, two places. And two places to the right of P is R. R, that is choice one. 18th one, choice one. 19. Who am, four of the following five. That means odd man out. T and O. And T and O, these two are adjacent to each other. M and P, M and P are also adjacent to each other. S and T, S and T, are they adjacent to each other? S and T are not adjacent because there is one person between these two. Q and L, adjacent, N and Q, adjacent. Then what is your answer here? S and T. Hence, choice 3 is the answer, except the choice 3. And in the remaining pairs, these two persons are adjacent to each other. But as in choice 3, there is one person between these two. Then question number 20, who among the following sits exactly between R and S? Yes, who is in between R and S? Who among the following? Who are the persons? M, P, T, O. When counted from the left of S, 
counted from the left of S means these three persons L, Q and N. L, Q and N, what is the answer here? Who among the following sit exactly between? Exactly between means exactly between R and S. Then who is that person? Q is that person exactly between. Choice 5. Exactly means equidistant, equidistant from R and S. Who is that person? Q is that person. Then question number 21st. Who sits second to the right of T? Seated second to the right of T is M. M that is choice 2. 21st it is choice 2 is the answer. And this is about question number 17 to 21. Then 22 to 24. Now in this 22 to 24, what is the information given here? Six friends KLM, NO and P has different number of chocolates. Now these persons are being compared in the number of chocolates these persons are having. Isn't it? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. Then M has more chocolates than only one person. As M has more than only one person, and this M is the second from the list. M is the fifth place. And O has more chocolates than both K and P. O is having more than both K and P. N has more chocolates than O. N has more chocolates than O. Isn't it? N has more chocolates than O. N does not have the highest number of chocolates. As N does not have the highest number of chocolates, hence N must be at the second place. Why? Because there are at least three persons below this N, O, K and P. And again M is also there. Hence below this N, we should have four persons. O, K, P and M. Isn't it? O, hence O must be at this place. And K or P can be in any order. Then P does not have the lowest. As P does not have the lowest, P is in between O and M. And K will be here. Then who is the person left over? L is the person left over who is having the maximum number of chocolates. Then 22nd. Which of the following represents the possible number of chocolates which L has? And one more information. What is that information here? N has eight chocolates. N is eight. And the one who has the third lowest number of chocolates has four. Now this is four. Now we need to find out the possible number of chocolates L has. Now L is having more than eight. More than eight, what is your answer? Choice four. All the remaining four choices are lesser than eight, and only choice four is more than eight. Then 23rd, who among the following possibly has six chocolates? Possibly six chocolates means in between four and eight. Who is that person? O, choice three. 23rd choice three. 24. How many people have less chocolates than K? How many have less than K? There is no person because K himself is at the last place. Hence none, choice five. Clear? And this is about 22 to 24. Then 25 onwards. Now question numbers 25 to 29. What is the information here? Seven people. Who are the seven people? H, I, J, K, L, M and N. Are the seven people and who are staying on seven different floors of a seven floor building. Ground floor is numbered one, first floor is number two and so on. Now seven floors, whenever floors were given, fix the floor at the center. Isn't it? 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. 7 floors. And at the same time, what is the other information we have? And each one of them speaks a different language. 7 persons staying on 7 different floors, and each one of them speaks a different language. Each one of them speaks a different language. Now we need to find out the answers. Now only three people live between L and the one who speaks Gujarati. Between L and Gujarati, how many persons must be there? There are, there should be three persons. Three persons between L and Gujarati. And at the same time, what else is given here? L lives above the one who speaks Gujarati. As L lives immediately above the one who likes Gujarati, now we are going for the possibilities. Now this is case one and this is case two. Now in case one, we are taking this, the person who is speaking Gujarati on the first floor. Then L, three people live between L and Gujarati. Then where should this L be? One, two, three. L must be on the fifth floor. That is possibility one. And in the second possibility, what is the second possibility? If the person from Gujarati is on the second floor, L must be on the sixth floor. That is the second possibility. And one more possibility is also there. What is that other possibility? The person who is speaking Gujarati is on floor number three. L must be on floor number seven. 
and so many possibilities do we have in total three possibilities as of now in this diagram it is possible for us to represent only two cases hence i am representing these two working on these two simultaneously and if these two are invalid then i will directly go to the third possible clear now then l lives immediately above l lives above the one who likes gujarati only two people live between the one who speak gujarati and english between gujarati and english how many people are there there are two persons as there are two persons between gujarati and english now the person who speak english must be on the fourth floor and in the second case english must be on the fifth floor then next one and the one who speaks oriya lives immediately above k and the one who speaks oriya is immediately above k and so these two persons are adjacent k neither speaks english nor gujarati k neither speaks english nor gujarati k cannot be here k cannot be here are you following or not k cannot be either on floor number 1 floor number 4 and k does not live on an even number floor x k does not live on an even number floor 2 4 6 is ruled out and this k can be either 1 3 and 5 are you following or not k must be either 1 3 and 5 now let us check out in case 1 k cannot be on the second floor cannot be on the first floor then whether k can be on the third floor or not tell me no why if k is on the third floor then the person who speaks english must be on the fourth floor which is not possible because the person who speaks english is on the fourth floor isn't it oriya cannot be on the fourth floor hence k cannot be in any one of these five floors k cannot be on the sixth floor as well why k cannot be on the sixth floor because k must be on an odd number floor hence k cannot be on 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 5 6 hence k must be on the seventh floor because that is the only odd number left over then can k be on the seventh floor if k is on the seventh floor the person who speaks oriya must be above this one which is not possible and this case is completely ruled out done with this now we are left with only the second possibility as of now and one more possibility is also there third one then coming to this one k is 1 3 and 5 hence k cannot be second cannot be four cannot be on the sixth one and k cannot be gujarati and english as well k cannot be five as well isn't it k cannot be english and gujarati now we are left with k can be either on 1 3 or 7 k cannot be on the seventh floor because oriya person must be above this one which is not possible hence k must be on either the first floor or the third floor k cannot be on the first floor as well because the person who is speaking oriya must be on the second floor not possible because gujarat speaking person is already there on the second floor hence k cannot be in any one of these floors except k third floor k must be here if k is here now the person who is speaking oriya must be on the third, fourth floor are you following or not now we have finalized this k and oriya and the one who likes oriya lives immediately above k and k does not speak english or gujarati k does not live on an odd number even number floor next one the one who lives immediately below j speaks hindi immediately below j is what speaks hindi now we need to find out the position of this j and the one who speaks hindi does not live on the lower most floor and j and hindi as j and hindi where can this j be tell me now the possibilities for this j is what 1 2 4 5 and 7 out of which j cannot be on the first floor are you following or not because if j is on the first floor the person who is speaking hindi must be below this one which is not possible are you following or not hence now we are talking about the position of this j now j now what about this j j cannot be at this place then can j be on the second floor tell me j neither speaks oriya nor english j cannot be on floor 4 cannot be on floor number 5 cannot be on 1 cannot be 4 cannot be 5 and cannot be on 2 because k is already there cannot be on this one as well hence j what are the possibilities for this j j can be either on the second floor or on the seventh floor and whatever this j j either neither j the one who speaks hindi does not live on the lower most floor as hindi cannot be on the lower most floor hence j cannot be on the second floor as well are you agreeing this one or not because if j is on the second floor the person who is speaking hindi must be on the first floor which is not possible 
Hence, what is the only possibility left for this J? J must be on the seventh floor. If J is on the seventh floor, the person who is speaking Hindi must be on the sixth floor is none other than L. And J neither speaks Oriya nor English. J neither Oriya nor English. Next one, M speaks Bengali. Yes, whatever this M, M speaks Bengali, then where can this M be? M cannot be on the fifth floor because the person who is living on the fifth floor is speaking English. Cannot be on the fourth because fourth floor person is speaking Oriya. Cannot be on the second because second person is speaking Gujarati. And what is the only thing left over here? M is on the first floor and he is and he speaks Bengali. M speaks Bengali. N does not live immediately above or immediately below K. As N cannot be immediately above K or immediately below K, N cannot be on the second and the fourth floor. As N cannot be on these two floors, N must be on the fifth floor. Isn't it? Then I does not speak Oriya. As I does not speak Oriya, I cannot be on floor four, and so I must be on the second floor. As I is on the second floor, then who is the person left over here? Then tell me, H, I, J, K. H, H is the person left over. And now this H speaks Oriya. And this is the information about this one. And this case itself is valid. Then no information given about the languages spoken by these two persons, K and J. Isn't it? Now what are the remaining two languages left over here? Punjabi and Marathi. If J speaks Punjabi, then this K speaks Marathi or if this K speaks Punjabi and this person J speaks Marathi. No information given about these two, hence that will be left as it is. Clear now? And again it is not necessarily to have a final arrangement. In some of the cases what happens here? Some of these can be left over. Then. Yes, done with this one, question numbers 26 to 25 to 29. Yes, shall I explain the questions or not required? Final arrangement, done. Yes, write down this arrangement. J, L, N, H, K, I, M. Now on the top floor, four on the top floor, Punjabi and Marathi. And in the next one, Hindi. Next is English, Oriya. And on the top floor, Marathi and Punjabi. Second floor, Gujarati and on the first floor, Bengali. Done? 25 to 29. Then, question numbers 30 to 34. Now, question numbers 30 to 34 comes under which category? 30 to 34, inequalities. Now, in this inequalities, question number 30, the relation between U and P. Now, the relation between U and P, between U and P, one lesser than and one greater than, two opposite symbols, no relation. And conclusion two, now in conclusion two, the relation between X and U. What is the relation between X and U? X and U, between U and X, one lesser than and one greater than. Again, two opposite symbols, hence no relation, neither one nor two, given in choice four. Hence question number 30, it is choice four is the answer. Done? Then 31st, question number 31. Now in this question number 31, the relation between W and X. Yes, what is the relation between W and X here? W and X. X is here, W is here. What is the element which is common between these two? A, A is the element which is common. A lesser than W, isn't it? A lesser than W, that means X is lesser than or equals to A lesser than W. Now the relation between W and X. X lesser than W, W is greater than X. W greater than X, choice one. W greater than X, choice one. Then coming to the second one, X lesser than or equals to H. X and H, what is the element here? X lesser than or equals to A, and A equals to what? A equals to H. Hence, X is lesser than or equals to H, this is also follows. And so what is your answer? Both the conclusions follow, both one and two, given in choice two. Question number 31, it is choice two. Then 32. Now in this question number 32, the relation between X and M. M is here, X is here. What is the element which is common here? X, A is common. Now between M and A, M greater than or equals to A, and between A and X, X lesser than or equals to A means A greater than or equals to X. Now between M and X, what is the element here? M greater than or equals to X, X lesser than or equals to M, definitely true, choice one. Then coming to the second one, W and M. 
m and w one greater than one lesser than two opposite symbols that is false and so only conclusion one is true only conclusion one it is given in choice one 32 choice one then coming to 33 j and o o and j what is the letter which is common here l is common o lesser than or equals to l and l and j j greater than l l is lesser than j then what is the final conclusion o lesser than j j greater than o now the relation between m and u m to l m to l what is the relation here m lesser than l and j and l j greater than l l lesser than j isn't it then the relation between m and j is what u greater than l l lesser than u now the relation between m and u is what m is lesser than u definitely true hence both the conclusions follow 33 it is choice one then 34 now in this question number 34 the relation between m and j now again which element is common here l is common between m and l the relation is m lesser than l and j greater than l means l lesser than j between m and j m lesser than j definitely true and second one u and o o is here u is here the letter which is common is j again o and l o lesser than or equals to l j and l j greater than l l lesser than j between o and j o lesser than j j and this one u greater than l l lesser than u now between o and u what is the relation here o lesser than u u is greater than but as here u lesser than is false then what is your answer only conclusion one only conclusion one choice one 34 choice one then 35 now 35 onwards now it is based on coding and decoding now in this proper irrigation is essential seeds should be proper now between the first and the second what is the word which is common here proper is the word which is common between these two and what is the code common here VA, VA is the code which is common. Hence, the code to the word proper is VA. Then the first one and the third one, irrigation is essential and monsoon delays seed sowing. No word is common between the first and the third. Hence, we cannot compare these two. Then the first one and the fourth one, irrigation is essential. Essential is the word which is common between these two. As essential is the word which is common between these two. Then what is the code here? The code which is common is LO. Hence, essential is LO. Now, in the first one, what are the words which are left over? Irrigation and what is the next one? Is. And the codes for irrigation and is can be either NA or SI in any order. Because none of these words were repeated in any of the other sentences and the codes of these individual codes cannot be identified. Then compare the second and the third. If you compare the second and the third, seeds should be. Which word is common between these two? Seeds is the word which is common. As seeds is common between these two, then what is the code common between these two? T U X Y G T. G T is the code which is common. Hence the code to the word seeds is G T. Seeds is G T. Should and be. Now B is the word which is common between these two. As B is common, and which code is common here? T U X Y. TU is common and the code to the word B is TU, B is TU. If B is TU, then what is left over in statement 2? Should. And what is the code to this word should here? The code to the word should is XY. Hence, as of now, we can able to determine the codes in statement 2. Then third one, delay and showing. And delays is the word which is common between these two. And what is the code common between these two delays? and delays is HB, BT, isn't it? BT is common between these two. As BT is common, then what is what else is left over here? Monsoon and sowing. Monsoon and sowing are the two words left over in this one, isn't it? Then what are the codes common here? Monsoon and sowing. As monsoon and sowing are the two words left over, tell me what are the codes which are left over. GT has been done and BT. GT and BT were done. Now we are left with DU and FM. DU and FM. And finally, now in this, finally what is left on in this one? Then B essential for. 
for is the word which is left over isn't it as for is the word left over and what is the code left over here delays is also done and that is bt and for is hp now these are the words and their corresponding codes then question number 35 which are the following may represent may why the word may is given because there could be a different word altogether showing what is the code for showing either du or fm du fm in any order and monsoon hence du or fm can be any order for these two words showing and monsoon and what is the code for in in is nowhere given in the statements and the code for in can be any code other than the given codes hence du fm is common in how many of the statements du fm is common here it also du fm du fm hence your answer could be either choice 2 choice 3 or choice 4 isn't it out of this choice 2 can choice to be your answer du is left over then can du be the code for in tell me whether du can be the code for in no because du can be the code for monsoon or sowing but it cannot be the code for in hence choice 2 is ruled out then choice 3 and what is choice 3 here fm and du je is left over now tell me whether je could be the code for in or not je is nowhere repeated in any one of the codes and it could be the code for in and so what is your answer here choice 3 question number 35 choice 3 36 which are the following represents proper seeds proper is va seeds is gt va gt choice 4 and 37 and what is the code for fur and the code for fur is hb choice 2 38 and what is the code for na na stands for what irrigation or is is or irrigation in any in any order choice 3 then 39 the code for should is xy choice 1 and 40th now question number 40 it is based on letter series now in this letter series check out the first letters here a b c d e first let us if you observe here ab bd and cf and dh as yes, tell me what should be the next one if you check out the first let us a b c d and e and the second let us b plus 2 is d plus 2 is f gh and ij and so what is the term here is a choice one done with this now this is about question numbers 1 to 14 paper number 9 then number series please Number series question numbers fifty six to fifty six to sixty. Now in this fifty six to sixty, now question number fifty six. Four five fourteen fifty one two hundred and twenty. Now again, if you observe the choices, now the choices are in twelve hundred, eleven hundred, and so on. As the numbers are increasing at a very faster rate, it must be under multiplication or combination. Four and five cannot be related in the multiplication, hence it must be under combination. Hence four five. 14 is it 51 and next one is what 220 then how can you express this one 220 51 into 4 is how much 204 and plus 16 now this is into 4 plus 16 in the case of combination we should always check out at the highest numbers into 4 plus 16 now this is 14 into 3 is how much 42 42 plus 9 is 51 into 4 plus 4 square into 3 plus 3 square Now this is into 2 plus 2 square into 2 plus 4. Now this is into 1 plus 1 into 1 plus 1 square into 2 plus 2 square into 3 plus 3 square into 4 plus 4 square, and finally it must be into 5 plus 5 square. 220 into 5 is how much? 1100 plus 25, 1125, and it is given in choice 3, 4, 56 choice 4. Then 57. Now in this 57, again. 8 26 62 278 and 566 numbers are increasing at a very fast rate hence it must be under combination and 8 22 62 278 and the next one is what and 566 as it comes under combination check out at the highest pair 278 into how much will be 566 270 into 2 is so much 278 into 2 5 56 and what is there here 10 hence so how much is added into 2 plus 10 is added then again if you check out 26 into 2 is so much 52 plus 10 is 
8 into 2 is so much, 16 plus 10 is 26, into 2 is common into 2 plus 10, 62 into 10, 124 plus 10 is 134, 134 that is given in choice 3, into 2 plus 10, into 2 plus 10, into 2 plus 10 and so on and you will get the answer in in the difference as well. Difference of difference you will get definitely get the answer. What are the differences here? 18, 36, 72, 144 and 248 and so on, 288. Then question number 58. Now in this 58, 107, 113, 107, 113. Now if you observe here the numbers are increasing at a smaller rate, hence it must be under difference only. 113, 127, 157 and 212. Now 127 and 157 the difference is 30, 113 and 127 the difference is 14 and 57 and 12. What is the difference here? 43 plus 12 is 55, isn't it? Then what is the difference between these two? Here the difference is 25, here it is how much 16. That means difference of difference is squares. Hence the previous number must be how much tell me? Now the previous one, 55 minus 25, 30 minus 16, 14 minus 9. 14 minus 9 is how much? 5. And 5 minus 1. Now here the difference is 4. 1 plus 4, 5 plus 9, 14 and so on. Hence 107 plus 1 is how much? 108. 108 plus 8 plus 5, 113. What is the number missing out here? 108, it is given in choice 5. Now this is about 58. Then 59. Now again, it started with 10 and then is ending with 2,333. Numbers are increasing at a very fast rate, hence it must be under combination. 10 and 15. How can you express this one? 10 into 1.5 is 15 plus, isn't it? Plus 0.5. Are you following this one or not? Into 1.5 is 15 plus 0.5. Then what should be the next one here? Then 15.5. Now sir, 10, 15.5, next one 36.5 and 115. As it comes under combination, let us try check out at the highest number. This is 2333. Now at the highest number here, 36.5 and 115. How can you express this one? 36.5 into how much? 115. It will be around into 3, isn't it? 36 into 3 is how much? 108. 0 0.5 into 3, 1.5. That is 109.5. And this is how much? 115 plus 5.5. And next one. 15.5 into 2 is how much? 31. 31 plus 5.5 is 36.5. Into 3, into 2, and the next one, previous one is into 1. 10 into 1 is 10 plus 5.5 is 15.5. Into 1, into 2, into 3, into 4 plus 5.5. What is into 4? 115 into 4, how much? 115 into 4, 460 plus 5.5, 465 5.5 choice 5. And this is given in choice 59 choice 5. Then finally question number 60. Now in the 60, 28, 14, 21. 28 and 14, how to express this one? Only here the number is decreased. From there onwards it is increasing like anything. Hence it must be under into 0.5 or into 1. 28 into 0.5 is how much? 14. Next one, 14 and 21. 14 into 1.5 is 21. Into 0.5 into 1.5 and the next one must be into 2.5. 21 into 2.5, 42 plus 10.5. That is how much? Yes, what is your answer here? 52.5. 52.5 is the missing number here. Choice 2. Done with this? The given numbers are multiplied with 0 0.5, 1.5, 2.5, 3.5 and so on. Now this is about paper number 9. Paper number 9, question numbers 1 to 40 and 56 to 60. Yes, any doubts in these 45 questions? Anything to be explained once again? <coughs> 